Hi guys, welcome to my channel. So today I am really excited because today we are gonna have some fun with some color theory. So turn the lights blue. I am so excited you guys. I am going to be painting a picture entirely in blue light. Our whole basement is smart light so we can turn the entire basement into whatever color we want. I thought it would be so interesting to paint in a different colored light and then to kind of see how that looked when we turned the regular light on and we saw it in like normal light to kind of look at how color theory works and how our eyes can compensate for certain things and I just thought it would be really really fun and interesting. So if you're excited for that don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and if you want to learn more about color theory why don't you go ahead and check out our sponsor for this video. The sponsor for this video is Skillshare. You guys know I love Skillshare. They've been a huge supporter of my channel for so long and that's because I genuinely enjoy them. I used them well before I became a YouTuber or before they sponsored me. They have so many great classes. They have literally thousands of classes that you can take. So if you wanna learn something new in 2020, I definitely recommend them. A yearly membership comes out to like $10 a month. And as I said, there's so many great classes. So the one that I wanna talk about specifically is by Victor Nye. I have mentioned it before, but this one is is so relevant to this video that I really wanted to highlight it again and it is her color master class color is so important when you are creating artwork for me it is something that I absolutely love and I know a lot of people really struggle with incorporating color into their artwork so if that sounds interesting to you you want to learn a little bit more about color theory or this video just gets you really excited for color then go ahead and check out there is a link in the description box below for two free months of the premium Skillshare subscription so you really don't have anything to lose check it out and learn on your own time thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video I really appreciate it and let's paint some pictures in blue light and see what the heck happens okay so I am gonna start by working on the sketch and we're gonna jump kind of forward in the sketch because my head got in the way a lot during the sketching process. I'm gonna blame that on the fact that I wasn't at my normal desk but was instead leaning forward from my couch onto a table that was actually lower than me. So this was a really interesting like experiment I guess and it was a lot of fun and a lot of stress at the same time. So. I think the hardest thing was just, it was so dark. Like, obviously like all the light was blue, which was playing with the colors and things like that. But the fact that it was so dark, I, like the blue light can't light up the room as much as white or something like that. So I felt like my eyes are really struggling to adjust to the darkness and kind of see what I what was going on. I don't have great sight in the dark to begin with. So I was like, okay, this is hard. And I feel like that definitely affected the sketch a lot because I, I kind of felt like things were blurring and it was really hard for me to see the little details because of how dark everything was. And so that was the first thing that I kind of noticed before I even went in with the colors was just how dark it was and how much harder obviously that made it to draw. So when we're talking about kind of like color and how the eye perceives color, um, basically you have, you know, your eye <laughs> perceives a color that is reflected off of the object and not color that is absorbed into the object. So basically the color of the object is not permanent. So like an apple is not necessarily red. The surface of the apple is reflecting wavelengths that we see as red and then it's absorbing all of the rest. So like an object is white when it reflects all the wavelengths. Um, so in light, the colors, the primary colors are red, green, and blue. So that's probably different than what you've heard when talking about paint, which uses added it like, um, subtractive, yeah, subtractive color mixing. And so in paint, you're gonna hear uh, red, blue, and yellow are the primaries, but light is subtractive. So it is not the same. And those are gonna be the primary colors. So I wanted to start with blue because I wanted to see how blue was going to affect that. Um, and it was so, it was just so weird because you change the color of the light and, and everything changes. It's like your your brain is like, wait, what's happening? Um, but the thing that's really interesting to me is how your brain and your eyes start to compensate for it, at least 
to an extent. So my brain or eyes or whatever were never able to fully compensate for the amount of blue that I was working with. That was just not going to happen. But I definitely did feel like by the end of this, my eyes had started to adjust a little bit more and the white parts that I knew were like the white of the paper were starting to look a little bit more white and a little bit less blue. And I was starting to be able to differentiate the colors a little bit, but some colors were just so different that it, it like it was so hard. So there were two colors that I noticed were affected the most by the blue light and those colors were yellow and red. So yellow was the first one that I noticed because I put yellow down in the background and when I put the yellow down it came out so dark, so dark, it like totally freaked me out. That was the thing that I wasn't necessarily expecting, like I knew it was going to change certain colors because I've seen how various objects like in my basement change when we turn the lights, but I didn't really expect it to darken certain colors so much. So with the yellow, it darkened it a lot and I think part of that was due to any yellows that had a little bit of red in them or warmer colors that red and that blue are gonna make like a magenta color so that's kind of darker or at least your eyes gonna perceive that as darker and then I think if it was like a cooler color like a more greeny color then that was going towards cyan so I think just both those colors are slightly darker than yellow and it just mixing them all together it almost looks like this browny yellowy greeny like unhealthy pea color <laughs> and uh, by the way I'm not a scientist I don't know a whole lot at all about science or that kind of stuff I have done a little bit of research that I've been looking up so if you guys know more about this I would love to hear more about it down in the comments if you guys want to comment if anyone is like a specialist in this area but just so you guys know I'm not a scientist and take everything that I say with a grain of salt okay so next color was red red was crazy affected and I think it was kind of see look I'm adding so I'm adding red like pinky red to her face right now and it was scary because it was like dark 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 purpley brownie black and obviously like when I think about it it makes sense because the purple and the red like I said before are creating that magenta color so of course it's going to be darker but it was definitely, it made it really, really hard to judge because a lot of those lighter colors were showing up as much darker. So both the yellow and the red, I felt like I kept having to put them down and then I would paper towel them up because I was so scared that they were just way too dark or intense when you would turn on the, the regular light. So I just kept building those up in really thin layers because I was scared. And then I was nervous that when I turned the light on that you wouldn't be able to see any of the yellow or red at all. So it was this kind of balance that I was trying to figure out. So I was like, I know these colors. I know that this color is not dark purple, but you start questioning your own brain and your own mind because you're like looking at your color chart and you're like okay this color is cadmium red and then you put it on the paper and you're like nope that is dark purple <laughs> so it definitely starts playing tricks on your mind a little bit because I was in this blue light painting for two two and a half hours so it was you know kind of a long time to be like completely surrounded by a completely different colored light that's totally changing your perception of colors and then trying to paint with those colors and semi compensate so that you're going to create something that actually like looks nice it was definitely a challenge but a lot of fun I felt like when I was working with this I had to stop caring as much about the specific mixes of colors because if you look at my palette everything looks almost black and that was kind of how it was there was a couple colors that I could see a little bit more but everything was just so dark and so black that I would you know be picking three or four colors and mixing them together but I couldn't really see what that color was gonna look like at all and once I got it on the paper I could see a little bit of what it was gonna look like but it was still really really hard for me to judge so I had to start going off of my own knowledge of color theory and what colors look good next to one another so I knew that I wanted to kind of work with some like yellows and some greens and some blues kind of working in that color scheme and then some browns for her jacket but not being able to see it, I was just, I don't, you know, you can't tell if you're getting the light right, anything right, but it helped me let go of a lot of perfection, I think, because like I said, I couldn't see it properly. Everything was kind of 
blurry. <laughs> um, and I couldn't be as picky about my colors because I'm just grabbing them and I couldn't necessarily match colors perfectly either if I ran out. So everything kind of blended together and created all of these different color pools and patches and I really ended up, I don't know, I'm not going to spoil how the end looks for you but just keep an eye out because I feel like it really helped me use colors that I wouldn't have thought about using or mixing together or the colors I feel like had a lot more variation in them and there was a lot more depth to the shadows and to just the colors in general because of that. So it was definitely, it was definitely an interesting experiment and I really, I don't know, I really enjoyed it and I really enjoyed turning the lights on at the end. I felt like by the time I was getting close to the end, I was getting so impatient to just turn the lights on and see what it looked like. I was just like trying to finish it and get it done. <laughs> but yeah, so have you guys ever done this before? Have you ever experimented with painting or doing colors in a different light? Because I am really curious. I just kind of had this idea because like I said, our whole basement is smart lights. So I was chilling down here and I like to make the lights purple. So I made them purple and it really does change a lot of the colors around you. And I was like sketching in my sketchbook and trying to do a little painting and then I turned the lights on and everything looked so different and I was like oh, I have to do this for a video so I actually really want to do purple as well and what I want to do is kind of a series of these videos and I want to compare how the different colors change in the different lights so in the blue light the red and the yellow were super super dark and all of the colors obviously were a lot more muted they were a lot uh, more cool toned because whenever I used the warm toned colors it really flattened those out and pushed them into like a gray area and then when I was using more blues and things like that obviously those were a lot more blue so her hair I thought was blue like I thought it was blue we turn the lights on, it's not blue, but I thought it was like bright blue this whole time. So it's, yeah, it, it definitely was really interesting. So I want to see comparatively, you know, what that looks like if I painted it in red light or a green light or a purple light. So let me know if you think that would be interesting and definitely share any knowledge that you have on how the eye perceives color because I think it's so fascinating and would love to learn more about it, but I haven't been school, haven't been in school in a really long time. And I think the last science class I took was horticulture, my junior year of college. And it was great because we got to make a Christmas wreath and we got to make bonsai trees and we got to visit the Bronco Stadium because they have heated grass. It was very cool. That's a tangent. Some quick information about this painting. Now I've kind of talked about the light. It's on the B watercolor paper that I love. I always use that paper. I did the painting with May Mary watercolor paints that are like 20 years old from my mom. I used the uh, Peebo masking fluid pen for the masking fluid and I just got the paper damp before I added that in. And then to add in some final lines, I went over the top with this Pentel brush pen that I just got in the January palette full packs and it's a gray pen and then the only other things I used were I used my uh, metallic palette from ooh, Peter Paul Rubens and or I think it's just Paul Rubens I'll link it down in the description box below all my supplies are always linked in the description box and I also used my white gel pen and just like a white charcoal pencil that's all the supplies that I use so if anyone's interested like I said everything will be linked in the description box below. So we are kind of nearing the end of this portion of the video, at least in terms of the blue light drawing aspect. I, I don't know, like I said, it was fun. I feel like I've said that a thousand times, but difficult, fun, difficult, overall hard to see, uh, challenging, confusing, hurt my brain, but overall, pleasant experience by the end of it. The end result was kind of worth all the pain in the middle. So it was kind of like a tattoo or a marathon. So, you know, there you go. See, do you see how dark that is? That's so dark. Like that's, that's light yellow, literally right there. That's, that's light yellow going on. Cadmium yellow, cadmium yellow light. Isn't that crazy? That blows 
my mind. Okay, I hope you guys liked this video. I know it was super rambly, but I am going to stop talking. At the end of this, you're gonna see our reaction, or my reaction, and I guess my boyfriend's reaction, to turning the lights on. You'll get to see what this looks like with the lights on. So I hope that you liked this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Comment down below on the questions that I asked you if you wanna see more of these, what color you wanna see next, and please tell me if you know more. Uh, big thanks again to the sponsor of this video at Thank You Skillshare for sponsoring my channel. I really appreciate it. And thanks for watching. I love you guys. And as always, have a great rest of your day. Bye. Okay, you ready to look at it and see what it looks like in yeah. regular light? Yeah. I'm like, I don't even, ugh, I think the eyes are so wonky. I like couldn't see what I was doing. Okay. A lot of rise and shine. Look, I need to close my eyes. Whoa. Oh, that's, that's not bad. Yeah, that's not bad at all. Oh, that's kind of cool. Oh, I like this area down here. Mm -hmm. The like blues and the, the purples. Mm -hmm. I mean, like the actual, like the drawing itself isn't great because honestly, like I was just like at a really awkward angle. I couldn't really, I couldn't really see what I was doing like mm -hmm. with my eyes, but the actual colors. The colors are cool. Oh wow, okay cool. Ah!